Hello everybody, welcome back to another tech tip here at 45 Drives. Um, today, today we're doing an extension of the last video I put out, where I showed you how you could download um, both a UI and local large language models so you can speak to it much like you would one of the cloud services, with the added benefit of it being on your network, it's yours, it's local, and it's secure. Uh, that was fun. It was a fun little video. It was about a little offshoot we found of a project we were working on, but we got a lot of traction of it. People liked it. We had some good comments. Actually, shout out to one fella for pointing out that I was loading models wrong. You were right. I should have been doing it through the UI. My own team down there after was like, why are you been doing that through the command line, dude? Eh, that's why we have fun here, right? Anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, what we're back here to talk about today is, oh, we made some more progress with it, right? Last time, we, uh, we downloaded a vanilla model, if you will. We just pulled something down and asked it some questions, or a question in that case. Um, but wouldn't it be really cool if, since it's yours, it's local, it's secure, you could feed it your own information, your own notes. Maybe you hold a personal wiki. Maybe your organization has some internal documentation that maybe gets a little troublesome to query through. So wouldn't it be great if you had an a AI tool that you could just ask it questions and it tells you back about your information, not the generic information that's been trained on the, um, in the wild, if you will. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that server. It is a different server. It's got a little more power. We've got a GPU in into it now. Um, and just how you can add your own information as a collection of information. Sorry, that was redundant, but you understood what I was saying, I hope. And then how we take one of the vanilla models, make a new model where it's aware of the information we just told it, and then we'll ask it a question. So why don't you join me in? Okay, so here we're sitting at a familiar prompt, uh, if you watched the last video, um, our open web UI, which we're going to use to query our models, uh, like we were running DeepSeek last time. So anyway, what we're here today to show you is how you can add your own collection of text documents and then create a model that's aware of all those text documents that you've just added up. Um, cool. So why don't we start? We'll go to Workspace and we go over to Knowledge. So when this loads up. Uh, we've got a couple here already, a uh, coworker of mine already loaded some up. But what you would do is you'd, you would first need to add a, if you will, pretty much a knowledge base of information. And then we're going to assign that to the model. So you'd hit plus here, and then what are you working on? It's like uh, my info. You can write a uh, description if you want, if it's private, if it's public, um, and groups. Because uh, remember, multiple people are using this. Maybe you want to keep it just for yourself. Maybe it's for the whole organization. In this case, it's my info. So I'm going to keep this one private to just my user. I'm gonna, oh, I have to put a description. I'm lazy, and I'm just going to write the same thing again. Okay. And then what would happen here is you now have to take a bunch of text files or, um, yeah, broken out information. We, in our case, we downloaded it, we scraped our whole wiki and we loaded it up and you'd put it in here. So let me show you uh, one of the existing knowledge bases. Um, this is the 45. And then, so there's just a bunch of pages here from our wiki, right? Okay. So that'd be first, first stage. You need to feed the information into the system. I got really excited when I said feed. I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm just going to continue here. Uh, and then from there, you'd hop over to models. So um, by default, when we look before, we had DeepSeek, blah, blah, blah. We have all that. That'd be great. You can use DeepSeek, but every time you ask it a question, or, or whatever model, sorry, every time you ask a question, then you'd have to like tell it to search your collection of information. That's annoying. Wouldn't it be great if you just had a model that I already knew and was maybe prompted ahead of time to like know what its role was? So that's what we're going to do. So again, a colleague of mine created one already, but I'll take you through what the process looked like. So you'd hit plus on a new model here. And the model name, we'll call this, uh, spell my own name right, Brett's Info. And then what base model do I want to work off of? So I'll just go off DeepSeek32B. It doesn't matter right now for this demo, but you would pick the vanilla model that you want to work with. Again, DeepSeek is a really, really, really powerful one. It's great. Uh, quick description, um, holds info from Brett's notes, sure. Uh, you can keep it private, we we'll talked before, it doesn't matter, but this one's for me, blah, blah, blah. If you've got a group of people and you're making um, 
like our wiki where we want everyone to search it, we'd make that public. Anyone who can log into this would want to do it. When I say public, I mean public to your organization, not public to the world. Twice. Uh, fun. So model parameters, uh, prompt suggestions. So yeah, this is cool, the system prompt. So here is, you can tell your model some baseline prompts about what it is and what its role is. Um, if you put nothing here, it'll just keep being generic. Like the example here is actually pretty funny. You were Mario from Super Mario Bros, acting as an assistant. I kind of like that and I want to write it because I want to see what happens. You're Mario from Super Mario Bros, acting as an assistant. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Um, but again, the point here is you can prompt this model to be like, like our wiki is like, you are a uh, researcher on the R&D team. You are aware of all this wiki knowledge. We're gonna ask you things about the organization so you can tell us things like that. Good old prompt engineering. You can do it a little clearer than that, but that's where you would do this and really fine tune the system for what you want it to do. And then here you'd go to knowledge select knowledge, and in my case, I'd hit my info here because I'd want it to know about the things I just taught it. And even as I read this now, as I'm going to ask it a question, I did not put any info into it, so it's going to be the generic stuff. But again, for demo purposes, you see what's going on. Um, and then for now, we'll just do that for now. There's more we can do. There's a lot of ways to skin this cat, and uh, we'll hold that for uh, new videos. So let's see what happens when we ask it. I'm really excited about this Super Mario prompt. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to go to new chat. So here um, I can hit my drop down. I should be able to see Brett's info. Perfect. So let's see what comes up. Uh, what should I ask it? It's Mario. It's my assistant. Can you write me an email to cancel all my meetings today? <laughs> it's Friday and I'm uh, going to them. So it should take a couple seconds. It is kind of funny too that Brett's info, it's all about this and it's empty. <laughs> is that kind of funny? Okay, so sure, here's an example of a friendly and professional email you can send. Uh, hope you find this, it's good email. Uh, best regards, Mario. <laughs> so the prompt, my prompt engineering was not very good there. It's supposed to be Mario, I'm not Mario. <laughs> Anyway, let me know if you'd like to adjust the wording further, and then he puts a little mushroom emoji. So. <laughs> anyway, that's funny. But the point of the value of what I'm saying is if you follow this process, you can fine tune these models to be aware of the knowledge that you load into it. And again, it's not ChatGPT, it's not Grok, it's not whatever ones that are up in the cloud and where you don't necessarily want to give it your personal information. It's yours on your local machine. For example, the local machine we're using here is a Stornator F8X1. It's got a uh, ADA 6000 NVIDIA GPU into it. Um, I don't know why I keep saying into it. It sounds funny that way, but I digress. 48 gigs, um, awesome product. Anyway, my point is with outlining that product there, the F8X1 is any of, a lot of our storage products can accommodate these models and these elevated computing by just slapping a GPU into them. So if this is something that interests you and you want a storage server and something that can do similar to this, but maybe write you better emails than the prompt engineering I just did, reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to help you and talk to you about your options. So, uh, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I kind of had more fun than I thought I was going to there. And we'll catch you next time. Good. Thank you. Thank you. He's good. That's how it happens. Pay him more. <laughs>